So today I'm going to show you a product I've just started using called Notebook LM. This is a product brought to you by Google. It is free, although it has a paid version that gets you some extra stuff. But the free version is perfectly wonderful as it is. So what is Notebook LM? Well, the LM stands for language model. So it's notebook language model. And basically it's for learners to extract content in a more digestible format. Well, and so let me start first. You can see I've made several notebooks. It assigns an icon to each one of them. And I just love that. It kind of just gives you that visual of what it is about. But I'm just going to jump into one of these. This is Brood for Brilliance. This was based off a PDF document I had. So just real quickly, here's how it looks. You get your sources over here. You get your summary in your chat here, meaning you can chat with the source. You can get an audio summary, which is in the form of a podcast, and it is amazingly awesome. It is so conversational. It can take technical content and make it so easy to digest. And then you can generate some study guides and briefing documents and what have you. But I'm going to take you through this process from the very beginning. We're going to start from the very beginning and we're going to create a new notebook. So the first thing you'll need to do is upload a source. So don't worry if you have multiple sources for one topic, you can add those later. So right now we're just gonna upload one of them. Well, you can upload or you can get something from Google Drive. You can have a website or a YouTube link. You can just paste in text and you can also just search for a source. If you don't even have a source, you can just find one. So I'm actually starting with a YouTube video and this is about vibe coding. This is like the new latest thing. Vibe coding is how to uh, create code without actually knowing how to code. So what it does immediately, it gives you this icon, it gives you a title, and it gives you a summary of the source that you've had. So let's say you're like, you know what? I need more sources. This is not enough. Maybe you're writing a paper or something. And so you can just search here for additional sources. And basically what I've noticed so far is the, the sources they provide are very good. So these are typically blogs and articles, and um, I haven't seen any YouTube videos yet. Uh, but anyway, they seem very like very reliable sources. So we're going to just, we're gonna add this one. We're gonna go ahead and import that one. Now, you can have several different types of summaries created. And like I said, the audio overview. And you can choose which sources you want to include in that. So let's say you have 10 sources listed here, but you only need to work with two of them. You can simply select the one you're wanting to work with. And when you do that, anything you generate will only include that source. So I'm actually going to choose both of these and I'm going to have a mind map generated. I'm going to have a study guide generated, a briefing doc, a timeline, and an FAQ, because I want to show you all of these. And I will show you the audio on another uh, notebook that I have, because you only get three audio generations a day. So I don't want to be wasteful with those. Um, OK, so this is a mind map. And so it's just going to kind of take everything and break it down into a hierarchy. And then these are expandable. And then you can see this one has additional parts to it. Now, if you're on something like you're like, okay, embrace exponentials. What is What do they mean by that? You can select it. It immediately feeds into the chat. And so now it's like you're having a conversation with the sources. It's pulling all the information about that one topic and now you can read about it. So it says based on the sources, the phrase embrace exponentials is mentioned in the context of defining vibe coding. And then it goes on to explain. It actually shows you a source. So when you select here, it's going to tell you where the information was pulled from. So that is very, very cool. Okay. Uh, the study guide is a little quiz with an answer key. 
I can see where this could be very helpful for teachers if you're needing to pull you know, quiz questions and get some ideas for that. Very nice. And you could also convert that to a source. If it is so good that you want to refer to it over here or you want to chat with it later, you can convert it to a source. So um, here's the timeline. So sometimes things are going to be better suited for the timeline. It's going to pull the dates as good as it can. You know, for this example, there really aren't that many dates, but it's done its best. And it will tell you the main characters that were mentioned. So these are going to be people and sometimes concepts. It depends on how the concept was used. And then we have, let's see, this is the FAQs. So it has a question and an answer. Okay. Very, very, very cool. Here I could just say, you know, I can ask anything. You can ask for social media posts. So see here was that summary. And then remember, if I only want to chat with just one of the sources or I want to generate a mind map or a study guide based on just one of the sources, I, I can select it over here and then I do need to regenerate that content. Okay. So here is a LinkedIn post for me. Let's see if it will add emojis. I like emojis in my posts. It helps break up all the text. And I don't know, I haven't tried this to see if that will work. And it does, it's added in emojis. Cool. Okay, now over here, you can share this with other people. So if you want other people to actually be able to edit it, you can add them and then you will mark them as an editor. So let me just show you this. I'm gonna share with another email address I have. So right now they can just view it. So if I've produced something and I'm like, hey, look at what I made. So if you're a teacher and you wanna show your students, like here's all the information you need, they can go and view it. But if you want them to be able to interact with it in real time and generate new content that will be saved here, then you would choose to make it an editor. So if you, if you have a team project, then one member of the team can create the initial notebook and then share it with all the team members, give them edit access, and then they can all be in there working and generating content um, you know, together in real time and they all get access to that. Um, there is another thing I really liked for researching is to give the MLA references says, and I'm going to select both of those because I want a reference for each one of them. So if I'm writing a research paper, you know, I pulled my content and now I have my references already written for me. It's absolutely beautiful. So now I'm going to show you this one. This is for, for photography law accuracy. So I created a document. And then I also had consulted with ChatGPT about this. And so I took that text and copied that in as a source. And so now I have my summary here and I'm going to generate a podcast about it. So what I'm wanting to do is present this content to my audience in a very digestible way. So I'm making this podcast audio and then my plan is to then take it into another program and add some b-roll footage to that to make it um, really come to life that's my plan but let's look here at a study guide what that might look like let's look at what a mind map would look like for this so this is the quiz we get the quiz questions and the answer key i'm going to go ahead and convert this to a source and I'm going to show you how I can then interact with that. Create two multiple choice 
questions. I didn't spell that right, but the chat will know what I'm talking about. So I've, I've chosen the quiz questions they, pro they produced for me. I made it a source, and now I'm interacting with that to get some multiple choice questions fully built out because here I just have the questions and the answers. I need some more options there. So I could then take these and feed those into some other program that I would share with students. Let's take a look at the mind map. So this is copyright and fair use. So here we have a definition for copyright. Here's the definition. Here's who owns it. And here is who owns the photograph based on contracts. So anyway, you can see here, you can go through this. Now, the other cool thing is at any moment, you can choose to download and it's going to download an image of that moment. So let me show you that. So I've taken a snap at that moment with all of that opened. So anything that wasn't opened is not going to be shown. It is an exact snapshot of that moment. Okay, let's just take a listen here real quick so you can hear what this sounds like. Welcome to the deep dive. Ever scroll through photos online and wondered um, who really has the say in what happens to them? Especially if you're actually in the picture. Yeah, it's a really common question. Today we're diving into the, well, sometimes murky waters of photography, copyright, and your rights as the person being photographed. Exactly. And we have two really valuable resources to, you know, help navigate this. First, um, there's a document from Artmind Garden Media, LLC, titled Fair Use and Copyright. That kind of lays the groundwork. Okay. And then we've also got a set of accuracy checks and the, some, well, really insightful suggested additions. Yeah. They help us sharpen our focus and get a much clearer picture. Right. Our goal today is uh, simple, but pretty essential. Spe I mean, you could see how easy it is to listen to that. It, it is just like totally chill. You know, you're just going to relax and listen. So this is a way to take content that may be extremely technical and turn it into multiple formats that different types of people can understand better. And the podcast is probably the highlight of Notebook LM. That Actually, that's what brought me here was that feature to check that out. And then I saw that they had all this other cool stuff. That is quite powerful how it does that and it sounds very very natural it's it's really crazy now on the audio you can just share that so you could copy a share link and just share that podcast um, but you can also download that and which is what i'm going to do i'm going to download that and then i'm going to pull it into another program and try to make a video on it and you will actually i'll make a video about that as well so uh there you have it i I think I've covered everything that you need to know about this. You need to be using this for me just as a learner to help me to get thoughts organized and to get ideas and to interact with the content quickly has been very, very valuable. But I can see for teachers using this, you know, to organize content and uh, for instructional designers to pull in your different resources that you need for a course you have your chat right here that you can be chatting to pull the objectives you can get summaries over here and study guides that can help you to not only organize the content for producing the course but to better understand the content as well without needing to read it line by line